Well, as tragic as it is, it's kind of what we understand the political situation to be, is that we have an administration that's failing on all cylinders, you know, the economy, uh, this whole woke culture where everyone's being canceled, pushing socialism, uh, ending our energy independence, and then the most tragic part of all those policies is projecting vacillation and weakness and confusion overseas. You have to think about it. When an American citizen watches Joe Biden give a press conference and we all, you know, Twitter and social media will start to like make jokes about his faux pas and, you know, reading that next question or I'm supposed to end here. What do you think happens when he's talking to these world leaders and these tyrants around the globe? So it's actually a very serious thing. As much as there's enthusiasm here at CPAC, I also think there's concern and worry about how bad it could get. And it's not only how bad it can get, but remember, what is going to be the impact that a Russia-Ukraine war will have on America? So the big question is, how will it impact already the rising inflation, the growing, the increasing energy prices and food prices? This is impacting all Americans. And so it's really putting that into perspective as well. And, and you've seen so many of our speakers talk about the issue uh, because it really is on the minds of, of the people here at the conference. You know, I think people often think of CPAC as either Republicans, sometimes they'll say, oh, it's conservatives. Obviously, conservatives in our name, but we're talking about this much more as a pro-America movement. It's people who believe that our founding was a good thing, that America is not intrinsically racist. Uh, they believe that America is the greatest country that's ever been created. And so you have a lot of new people as a part of this coalition who might not have been out of CPAC 15 years ago or so. So I talked to all, all, so many people uh, who are here and always and everywhere else, uh, and there's a difference of opinion. I think most people who are at CPAC are willing to listen to the case to intervene in places like uh, what's going on with the aggression and the takeover in Ukraine. They're willing to listen to the case, but the case has to be made. It hasn't been made at all. You can't stumble through a, a few cue cards and expect the American people to say that's worth our treasure or the blood of our children. Well, where I think we all agree on is that America cannot be weak. That is the most important message coming out of CPAC, that we need a strong America with a strong national security, economic security as well. And that's the concern that we're seeing. We're starting off, starting on a very shaky foundation because of the Biden presidency, who has all the wrong priorities. And then on top of that, he's the one that's gonna be managing an international crisis. That's where I think you see a growing concern. If I could just say one thing more, it's, it's interesting. Um, how uh, the charges were made that Trump was in the pocket of Putin, that he was Putin's puppet, that Trump would be a warmonger, he'd have a hair trigger, uh, he'd have a, a, a hair trigger. And but he would start World War III with the other people. Yeah, they, 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 they made yeah. these terrible charges against him. Actually, when he got into, into the presidency, he did much what Ronald Reagan did. He well-funded the military, he was tough. He, when he drew a line, he knew he was gonna stay there. Uh, no one questioned the fact that he might take some aggressive steps, but in the end, the tyrants stayed in their boxes. And now who's, who's in whose pocket now, and why is it going this way, I don't know, but once it starts to unfold this way, you can't really step back from weakness. It's very hard to, to not trip into these conflicts. Of course not, they didn't do anything for four years and neither did she. Yes, they played games, yes, they tried to take advantage, yes, they tried to win uh, the war in the press, and yes, there's a lot of spying that goes on, apparently also with Hillary Clinton to Donald Trump. But, the, uh, but all of that occurred, but at the end, they didn't want to take the man on. By the way, people didn't want to take Ronald Reagan on either. George W. Bush projected strength. Uh, the problem with Obama and now Biden is, is that the tyrants are allowed to do what they want. And when you see such division within our own country, where we're more focused about, uh, you know, talking to our military about critical race theory or all these other kind of climate global, change, yes, exactly, white rage, yes, when you're and really focusing on that and not honing in on military readiness and cutting defense spending, it puts us again in this weakened position. And so I think the Russians saw this clearly, that if, we, if Biden were elected, he saw his opening, Xi is seeing his opening as well, uh, and, and it's why you're seeing this aggressive behavior. And I don't think the Americans were prepared for this. I don't yeah, think the I Americans agree. ever thought that you were going to see a, a very aggressive country go in and just take over a sovereign nation. And let me just say one thing else. When you're talking about military readiness, 
the idea that they've been kicking out brave men and women right. from our military service because they didn't want to take a vaccine when they're young and healthy and they should be able to make these choices. What message did it send to Vladimir Putin when he could read our media saying these troops, and airmen, and soldiers were getting kicked out uh, of, of the military while we're trying to project strength? It makes no sense. It's illogical and our enemies picked up on it.